Hey guys, in this video we're going to create this dashboard design in Figma and uh, I know I haven't been around on YouTube for a while but there's some great uh, upcoming news uh, and updates uh, going on uh, and I'm going to share that uh, in the upcoming videos but now without further ado let's jump into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and let's create this design in Figma. So the very first thing which I did is just open a new document. I just click on the plus. As you can see, we're here on the new document and I'm going to select the frame. Then I'm going to select the desktop since 1440, um, it's uh, quite a good width to start when it comes to creating websites and uh, web apps. So the very first thing that we're gonna do right afterwards is to actually add a layout grid and we're going to change this as we go along but just to have a base going on I think that would be good. So let's go ahead and make the count 12. Um, the gutter I'm going to just leave it as this. We're going to add just a little bit of margin in between so this is actually something which uh, you usually want to um, essentially uh, figure out with uh, the developer as well. So what I would usually do at the start of a project is uh, I would create uh, a layout grid and uh, I would create a first uh, website and web page, then send it over to the developer just to have a check if uh, everything is uh, good on their part, especially if you're implementing a design which uh, is going to be part of a current website and you're not starting from scratch that's going to be very beneficial it's going to save you so much time uh, instead of you know figuring it out uh, later and having to adjust uh, all sorts of designs which you already created so let's go ahead and uh, let's select the rectangle tool and we're going to simply actually we're going to make it uh, um, to cover the entire width so it's 14 by 14 and then we're going to use this shortcut which is essentially using uh, the slash key and then we're going to uh, add two and this is essentially saying the slash is divided and uh, the two is divided uh, is the number so if we actually press enter you can see that uh, it just made the division right away so just a cool trick to essentially add some math uh, inside of uh, our Figma workflow. So that's that. And uh, one thing that I'm noticing though is that the layout grid uh, is uh, too much uh, visible. So I want to make it more subtle. So maybe let's try and just tweak around the color, something around these lines and uh, that will work. And I'm, also, I'm actually probably going to remove uh, the margins in this case since uh, I don't think uh, there's going to be um, a direct need for that. So, all right, the very next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to add uh, a headline. So, I'm just making up uh, some uh, um, text here, oops, two L's. And we're going to position this one right here. And uh, for this specific uh, example, we're going to use uh, Open Sans, which is uh, a free Google web font, which uh, you can download uh, for free from uh, Google's website. And uh, let's uh, try and make it, uh, actually, let's go with bold. Yeah, that'll work. And uh, here I'm just going to write some uh, uh, lorem ipsum text, which is essentially a uh, text which uh, isn't, uh, uh, doesn't really mean anything, but it's just placeholder text pretty much. So I saved it uh, using uh, um, an app, which is called uh, A Text, and uh, it's really cool because it allows you to essentially create these shortcuts, which uh, you can uh, easily replicate by using some uh, specific, uh, uh, by texting some specific words, combinations or symbols. So that's that, but uh, again, you can use pretty much any text that you want, as long as it's, uh, you know, placeholder text. It's just uh, text to understand the, the context, essentially. 
So that's that. And now we're going to use the rectangle tool again. And uh, we're going to make uh, a input field in order to add uh, some uh, um, elements for the newsletter. So I'm going to write here, subscribe to our newsletter. And I'm going to make the text just a little bit bigger and probably semi bold since I want to essentially have some more visual emphasis towards that text. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this and I'm actually going to go ahead and make this uh, a um, a circle. So I just entered the values of uh, um, an even number. And then I'm just going to go over here and make this one uh, uh, colored since we want the call to action to be colored. In this instance, we're actually going to add uh, an arrow. So you can select uh, whichever arrow icon that you prefer. So I'm just going to use Nucleo and uh, the Nucleo icons up, which again, you can download for free. I'm just going to add uh, a icon over here. Alternatively, what you can do is uh, you can create uh, two lines and uh, essentially create uh, a icon manually. But you know, that, uh, that that's something that you can also do, but I just prefer having the icon and then obviously you need to reflect it like perfectly, tweak it a little bit. And um, so yeah, just drag and drop in the icon is going to be uh, a better use of your time if you have uh, an app like Nucleo installed. So that's that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make this uh, input field white and in order to differentiate it from the background, what uh, we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a bit uh, of a drop shadow with uh, uh, quite uh, a good amount of blur. So uh, that's going to help us in uh, achieving that. All right, so far, so good. Now, what we want to add uh, also is uh, a disclaimer. Since uh, we're going to just pretend that the climber wanted to have a disclaimer right here for this specific web page. And we're also going to add, uh, well, actually, let's make this one regular. Let's add a knee here. And I'm actually going to duplicate the text. And I'm duplicating using uh, option, uh, the option key. And then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Control plus command plus spacebar in order to access the emoji panels. And uh, again, that's control plus command plus spacebar. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add this emoji, which is uh, the alert. I think you can find it uh, um, around here. Yep, there, there you go. So we're just going to use this one right here. And as you can see, we have the emoji. And the reason why I added the emoji separated from the disclaimer is because I want to control the size of the emoji. So by using the scale tool right here, um, I used it with the short shortcut K. You can see that uh, I can easily change the size of the emoji. So, all right, so far, so good. And uh, let's bring this one here. I'm just going to shorten this disclaimer just a bit. Also going to add a line right here just to add a little bit of a separation. And let's make the opacity also lower. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to change the color of the background. But before I do that, I'm just going to make up a logo. So 
Yeah, maybe something around these lines. Let's add the circle, so that's going to help us uh, to make it clear that this uh, is a logo. And uh, we're going to use a slightly different color this time, something around this. So we have the blue, we have the red in our composition. And let's uh, <coughs> bring it here and let's also adjust the letter spacing so that it's uh, a little bit uh, less of a distance between uh, the uh, one letter and the other. All right, so far, so good. Now, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm actually going to add an image which uh, I found on Unsplash, but uh, which uh, I think looks amazing, and it's by Alexandro Asia. So we're just going to drag and drop this uh, into the composition, or actually download, and then we're going to drag and drop it in order to access the maximum resolution. As you can see, the image is quite uh, quite big, so we're going to need to scale it down. And as you can see, this is fitting pretty well in the composition. So probably going to go with uh, a size uh, around these lines. I really like uh, how the ultrawide monitor um, blends in uh, into the composition and uh, what we're gonna do next is we're going to make all of the text uh, which we just created and uh, turn it uh, into white text and uh, we're also going to change this one to, to white stroke and I'm going to use uh, a different color for the background which I'm going to sample directly from uh, uh, this uh, composition. So let's go ahead and remove uh, the, or actually not remove, but we're not going to make them visible um, anymore. So as you can see, we have uh, a nice, uh, nice effect. Uh, and uh, overall, this is looking pretty good. Now, one thing that uh, I always like to do whenever I'm creating something from scratch is to create uh, a few variations uh, of uh, the same landing page in order to see it side by side. In this case, we're actually also going to change uh, the color of the background uh, in order to kind of get more into the, the mood uh, of uh, this uh, uh, specific um, project. So let's go ahead here. And uh, another thing that we can try and play around with uh, is, for example, having uh, a darker version of this uh, uh, newsletter. And then we can see side by side which one uh, is actually going to, to work best uh, with uh, uh, what we're planning to do. So as you can see, uh, we have different options of, of contrast. We can even potentially keep the, the white version of uh, this uh, um, of this page. So for example, we can go over here and uh, a smarter thing that I could have done is to actually <laughs> select uh, or actually um, make a, a um, just keep the, the previous version so they didn't have to change all the text colors, but uh, it's, uh, it's quite an easy fix uh, since we don't really have uh, many elements on the table. So it's going to be all right. And um, yeah, as you can see, also this one is working uh, pretty well. So you have a few few options, a few choices, and uh, this is something that I really like to do also with uh, my clients whenever I'm presenting uh, some work. Uh, maybe I'm going to try different layouts uh, and uh, different arrangements. Maybe over here I could, uh, instead of using just the arrow, I can uh, have text uh, within this button in order to maybe make it more clear, but then we can see that the arrow would be enough and then maybe we go with the other decisions. So there's really a lot that you can do, but um, yeah, just keep in mind that having uh, options on, on the table, it's always something which uh, is uh, good to have whenever you're working on any design project. And in Figma, it's uh, really easy to do since you can simply duplicate uh, a, the frame and the artboards a few times and then you can have your desired outcome.